Hello, I'm Tom Coderre. On behalf of my colleague Yvette Torres and SAMHSA's Recovery Month team, we welcome you to the Road to Recovery 2015, a showcase of events. The Recovery Month observance is held each year in September with support from SAMHSA and a cadre of more than 200 planning partners. It celebrates people in recovery, raises our awareness and understanding of mental and or substance use disorders, and recognizes those who work in the field of behavioral health. The 2015 Recovery Month theme, Join the Voices for Recovery, Visible, Vocal, Valuable, highlighted the contributions of the recovery movement, which has given a voice to those who have overcome mental and or substance use disorders. Community events are the cornerstone of Recovery Month. During these events, we help to educate, mentor, and engage others in supporting recovery. Those involved with Recovery Month events also assisted people in getting the help they needed to overcome mental and or substance use disorders. By hosting activities and events in September, we helped ignite conversations about prevention, treatment, and recovery services for behavioral health conditions. Recovery Month helps to educate Americans about the fact that mental health services, addiction treatment, and recovery support services can enable those with a mental and or substance use disorder lead healthy, rewarding, and productive lives. No one is immune to these disorders and their effects. Nearly one in 10 Americans struggle with a substance use disorder, and about one in five have a mental health issue. As we hear the stories of people in recovery, we learn that while the journey of recovery follows many different pathways, progress on every one of those paths depends on relationships marked by care, support, resiliency, and respect. Hearing their voices is an important part of educating all Americans, including our elected or appointed officials, civic, business, and other community leaders about the societal benefits of recovery. Recovery Month events help educate them about the gains and cost savings that can be achieved through the availability of behavioral health services. And welcome to SAMHSA's 26th national, uh, annual Recovery Month observance. It's really an honor for me to be here this morning uh, with all of you. My name is Tom Coderre, and I'm the Chief of Staff to the Administrator at SAMHSA. Uh, Recovery Month is so special to me because as many of you know, I am a person in long-term recovery. And for me, that means I haven't used alcohol or drugs since May 15th of 2003. And my life has gotten better as a result, right? I've created a better life for myself, for my family, and ultimately uh, my entire community because that's what recovery gives us. It gives us that opportunity uh, to create a better life for ourselves. It's not just about not using alcohol and other drugs. Uh, it's about creating that better life. Um, and as a direct result of my recovery, I'm living a full and very productive life today. I'm proof that when people get the help that they need, they can and they do recover. I'm honored to serve as your MC uh, for today's event, which highlights the important role recovery plays in addressing behavioral health issues, such as mental and substance use disorders. Recovery Month is the embodiment of SAMHSA's main message that be behavioral health is essential to health, that prevention works, that treatment for mental and substance use disorders is effective and that people can and do recover. It's a celebration of everyone who has achieved long-term recovery from mental and substance use disorders, and it recognizes contributions of dedicated people providing treatment and recovery services across our nation. With regard to illicit drug use, we saw a small but significant increase in drug use among Americans 12 and older from 24.6 million in 2013 to 27 million in 2014. <laughs> this means about, about one in 10 teens and adults in, the, in America have used illicit drugs in the past month. This increase appears to be driven primarily by an increase in marijuana use, which went from just under 20 million in 2013 to 22.2 million in 2014. The only significant increase we are seeing here is use among adults 26 and older. So the good news is that while young ad adults and adolescents are showing smaller variations, they were statistically similar to previous years, so not a significant increase. In 2014, 140 million Americans age 12 or older reported current use of alcohol. 60, about 61 million, 60.9 million reported binge alcohol use in the past month, and 16.3 million reported heavy alcohol use. The great news is that among youth aged 12 to 20, we've seen major declines from 2002 figures, with reductions in current use down from 28.8% in 2002 to 22.8% in 2014. 
reductions in binge use have gone from about one, one in five youth now to one in seven youth. And declines in heavy use have reduced almost by half from about 6% to 3%. So that's great news for our nation's young people. Nearly one in five adults age 18 or older had a mental illness in 2014. Good news for the baby boomers among us is that the percentage of adults with any mental illness in the past year was actually lower for those age 50 and older. It's a fairly steady finding across a number of the different dimensions. In 2014, 9.8 million American adults, or about 4%, so 1 in 25, however, had a serious mental illness or a mental illness with serious impairment. And there's been an increase in the level of adults experienced past year SMI since 2009. This increase reflects a small but significant uh, raise in the rate of SMI among adults 18 to 25 primarily. In 2014, 6.6% .6 of adults age 18 or older, or about 15.7 million people, had at least one major depressive episode in the past year. And 4.3% of adults, 1 in 25, 10 million people, had major depressive episode with severe impairment. But for American teens, we see that more than 1 in 10, 12 to 17-year-olds, experienced a major depressive episode last year. 1 in 10 teenagers had a major depressive episode. In 2014, about one out of every 25 Americans thought seriously about trying to kill themselves. That's one person in every classroom, every office, every extended family. That's a handful or more in every sports league, in every house of worship, a college, or business. And it saddens me to report that more than a million people made a suicide attempt last year. That's more than a million of our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters, our colleagues and our coworkers. And unfortunately, the rates for suicidal thoughts, suicide plans, and suicide attempts among adults have been stable for the past six to seven years. There are certain groups that are at highest risk. Young adults aged 18 to 25, women more often than men, and people with substance use disorders were much more likely to have made suicide plans or to have attempted suicide than people without substance use disorders. With so many Americans affected by behavioral health conditions, our goals must be shared goals. Our burdens are shared burdens, and our accomplishments will be collective. After all, the numbers I just shared are not just numbers. They translate to real people and to real lives. We have many powerful speakers here today who will share their stories to help us see that these lives, the faces and voices behind the data, are people who can achieve what my amazing colleagues here at the table have achieved. And with our continued support and collective efforts, prevention is possible and recovery can be a reality for anyone. In the words of William White, recovery is contagious. That catching recovery often involves exposure to people in recovery. Those of us in recovery can be recovery carriers and infect others by our openness about our own recovery experiences. Recovery is truly infectious and magnetic, and together we can make profound changes simply by being honest and open about who we are. So thank you to all of you in this room for all that you do. We've made great progress, but we have much work to do. My disclosure is in keeping with this year's theme of Recovery Month, visible, valuable, and vocal. That in order to overcome the fear and shame associated with these conditions, we must stand up and speak out for the public to recognize that we are your family, friends, coworkers, and neighbors. SAMHSA, we define recovery as the process of how people take control of their illnesses, improve their behavioral health, and live their lives to the fullest potential. We know that recovery is built on access to evidence-based clinical treatment and recovery support services. We know how to support recovery. We know that treatment and services work, such as access to health care, stable and safe housing, a job, and social connections. But too often, a sizable barrier continues to be for recovery, the misperceptions and negative attitudes associated with mental illnesses and addictions. These attitudes lead to ongoing prejudice and discrimination that impacts educational opportunities, community life, and careers, and has a chilling effect on seeking care and treatment. As our First Lady Michelle Obama stated, we need to quote, flip the script when it comes to mental health and addictions in this nation. SAMHSA, we're doing just that along with Recovery Month. SAMHSA supports such efforts as the Voice Awards, National Children's Mental Health Awareness Day, National Wellness Week, and the Campaign to Change Direction to help this vision become a reality and break down the barriers to recovery. My path is not the same as others. But we know that thousands of Americans suffer and attempt suicide each year. 
On the other hand, we also know that the vast majority of people recover lives of value for themselves and their communities. In order to stem this tide of suicide, as Kana has brought up, in order to make a difference um, for people who are facing their worst moments of distress, we must be able to listen supportively and without fear, without judgment, to people in their most difficult moments. We must, I think, create a more dignified and supportive set of solutions for people in, our, in crisis. And we must foster communities in which mental health and suicide prevention are seen in, as crucial, in which people have their dignity supported along with their health, and in which all of us who live in recovery are able to bring messages of hope um, and show ourselves, as we do in Recovery Month, as visible, vocal, and valuable. Do you know why it is so cru crucial to love the homeless man outside of a liquor store or the woman that was recently released from prison? Because if we help them down the road, those are the people that will be in recovery and help you or your loved one if they ever find themselves down the road of addiction. It could be those people that offer a warm, welcoming hug to your friend, neighbor, or coworker at their first 12-step meeting. It may even be those people that become recovery coaches and help your son or daughter, niece or nephew, to find and sustain recovery. We can't pick and choose who will find recovery and when, but we can pick and choose who we are willing to extend help to. We need to help those people today so that they can help more people tomorrow and so forth. As my story illustrates, we are all connected. In the last few years, I've not only learned that recovery is possible, but I've experienced that recovery is a reality. And where there is breath, there is hope. Hope that any individual can find recovery and become a responsible, productive, and contributing member of society. And I stand before you today as an example of that. Thank you. But this year has been a special year for all of us. Um, it's been filled with decisions that really signal a profound period of positive transformation. The Affordable Care Act, uh, for many, the pathway to recovery was stood on assault in the Supreme Court. Marriage equality and gender rights were affirmed. A president, the first in history, visited a prison where 50% of the people incarcerated are there because of an addiction. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid issued waiver guidance saying that addictions was a chronic disorder, justifying the entire treatment continuum, including residential treatment, which before was prohibited under the IMD. A presidential candidate announced a $10 billion plan to combat Americans' deadly epidemic of drug and alcohol addiction. And a person in recovery here with us today, Michael Botticelli, was confirmed as director of the White House Office of National Drug Policy. I pledge that to commit, commit our show and whatever else I can do, to make sure the word is heard correctly. I need your help to make sure I tell the story appropriately. The more we can applaud the people in our lives who are often with shame not telling us what's going on, will allow them to be free of a burden they should not be carrying anymore. And I do believe, I know Congress is making a lot of decisions about this, but we have better time now than ever before to be able to push people in the right direction when they need help. Let's take advantage of those services. I learned today more about the, the, uh, the, the, the services that are out there, predictive service, pre prevention services and addiction services that are not actually part of a doctor's office, taking advantage of those. And I pledge to you that we will do whatever we can to shine a light on the darkness that is surrounding what you do. Emily Dickinson said, I dwell in possibility. By gathering together today, we continue our work to improve the behavioral health of the nation. We are choosing to dwell in that possibility. As we gather around these tables, we acknowledge and are grateful to those who put and organized this gathering together today. We also acknowledge the courage that it has taken each one of us to take these steps forward, realizing all the potential that life has to offer us. So let us continue to dwell in our own possibility and to share that possibility with enthusiasm and passion and resolve. By facing our mental and substance use disorders, recovery begins and we are empowered to speak our truth. Join the voices for recovery. Speak up, reach out. 
For information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It was a tremendous honor to win this award for the Durham County Criminal Justice Resource Center. Uh, I would like to thank the 30 or more providers that come together that volunteer to make this a, a successful event. Um, you know, it, we, the Criminal Justice Resource Center is a host for the event, but it is really uh, the most rewarding part is the fact that we have so many different providers that come together and volunteer. And this has really empowered us to try to do even better this year. We have uh, enlisted many more volunteers, and we are going to keep moving this forward. I have the great honor of representing the Rally for Recovery Committee from Rhode Island. Uh, we were given a special consideration award for the Rally for Recovery. We're the national hub in 2013. And um, I personally have been in the field for 30 years as a treatment provider, but I'm a family member of lots of people in recovery and I've been an ally forever. But the recovery committee worked really, really hard for the national event. We had people from all over the country, all over the world come in. And uh, Jim Gillen really was our lead and he was our man. Uh, he recently passed away. He fought the fight of addiction and fought the fight with cancer. But he gave that hope wherever we went. And we want to continue just sending that hope, a rally for recovery, and telling you that treatment is available and recovery is possible. And I'm just really honored to know that I can be a part of recovery, the intimate moments of the journey of someone. And as a family member, outside my family, I just have a larger family now. I created Recovery is Happening. We started a 5K walk run and a rally for recovery. And on our fourth year this year, we were awarded for the walk, run, and rally award and so I got to come here and meet a lot of the people that I researched and looked up to and it's really been an honor. So Recovery is Happening has not been an easy program to start. I think um, as a woman in long-term recovery myself, I know that anonymity and um, being anonymous has been what programs are about and so getting people to really come out from the shadows and talk about addiction and recovery in a new way with their neighbors, their friends, their co-workers has really been challenging. So I think that our community seeing that we won a national award can really bring some attention to them to start to understand that this really matters and we need to start talking about this. Staying on course without support is tough. With help from family and community, you get valuable support for recovery from a mental or substance use disorder. Join the Voices for Recovery. Visible. Vocal. Valuable. For confidential information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Recovery walks took place across the country in September as tens of thousands gathered in local communities to celebrate the courage, the strength, and the support that have helped so many experience firsthand that recovery is possible, that recovery can and does happen, and there is joy in recovery. We begin our coverage in Baltimore, Maryland, where the 9th Annual Recovery Walk drew thousands to Druid Hill Park Chinese Pavilion on a sometimes soggy September 12th. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on, let's go. For the thousands gathered in Druid Hill Park Chinese Pavilion, it was plain to see that recovery is more than just a concept. It's a reality that has helped so many people turn around their lives, and in the process, turn around the lives of their families, their friends, and even their communities. So this is the ninth year. I came aboard on year four. At that point, we were walking up and down Park Heights Avenue. However, because it became so costly to be able to, to do that, we found out it was more cost effective to come in the park. This is a more centralized location. Everybody in the city knows this area, and it's just, it's just amazing. This, 
Last, for the last eight years, we were across the street at a smaller pavilion. As you can see, because it has grown, we had to grow our space. We had uh, 1,200 pre-registered people, so it's more people that are coming up than registered on site, so it's just going to be amazing. No matter what your age, gender, race, or national origin, odds are you know someone whose life has been touched by mental or substance use disorders. But the message at this event rang out loud and clear. Recovery is very real, and people who recover go on to live very fulfilling lives. Um, on behalf of SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration of the Department of Health, I want to thank you for this um, on behalf of SAMHSA. Um, this is a great event. I've been to some of the events, and this is one of the great events that I've seen. Um, thank you for all you do in the community. Uh, you know, SAMHSA is working really hard um, to prevent this uh, you know, mental and substance use disorders, and not only to prevent them and address them, but also to celebrate people in recovery and continue to help those with the resources that we need to continue our journey in recovery. So congratulations on all you do, and I hope um, you keep doing this for many, many more years. Thank you. Recovery means everything to me. Um, it's my life, it's what I do, it's my profession. Um, it's just everything, and where I see it growing is with the use of peer support, peer support services. This can go beyond what it has ever been thought of. Peer support bridges the gap between treatment and recovery. So if we utilize the peers and utilize the peer support, if we get it funded, if we get it approved by the state to be a, a billable service, it's amazing how many people have, been, have come here based on the fact that they're connected to a peer. From Baltimore, we take you to an even bigger event. This one is in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. A whopping 25,000 people gathered on September 19th to take part in the 14th annual recovery walk. And just like their counterparts in Baltimore, you could sense the joy, hope, and enthusiasm in every step the marchers took. Recovery is a beautiful thing and people need to believe in it. We need to have events like this to show that recovery is not only possible, it's fantastic. It's important for the general public to realize that uh, mental illness and substance use, uh, substance use affects a big percentage of the population. About one in four individuals in this country identify uh, with having a mental illness, according to SAMHSA. Um, and um, there's, there's a lot of stigma and taboo and a lot of things that don't get talked about. And I think that it's important to raise awareness so that people that may be struggling in the closet or behind the scenes know that there is a community out there, that there is support available, that there are treatment options available, and that recovery is possible. And it'll help them hopefully see this and take that step forward. These kind of events show you how many people there are out there that ha are in recovery and how important it is for all this support, the housing, the rehabs, the detox, everything that's here. If you're new and you're coming here, this is the place where you can get the help right away. And this is important to have events like this so the whole world can see that we do recover and we are beautiful people. Being young and in recovery, I was ashamed and embarrassed and uh, you know, it kept me from the program. And, so things like this today, you know, you see a mix of people, age groups, uh, you know, people of different races and, you know, whatever, all of the above. Um, I think it's important as a community to do these things and kind of fight through that stigma and, you know, yeah, move forward. Showing that recovery and addiction are not this, are not like exactly bad things or, or anything. They're not these things that stop you from, from being like a major part of your community. Um, that's why it's important for everybody to show up. That's why I tell, tell people. So it was a long process until I realized that I was ill and, um, and, um, and was able to kind of access the supports and services that I needed to start the recovery from Mount So it was a very devastating process and a very painful process. But, um, but I'm here today and in a much better place and in a different place. And it's all about recovery. It's because of my recovery. This month marks the 26th anniversary and observance of National Recovery Month. While we know every day is a day to celebrate our recovery, September is a time to focus on the issue and collectively raise awareness that substance use disorders are diseases. Diseases that can be treated and that people in recovery can live full, happy, and productive lives. We are not bad people who need to get good. 
We are sick people who need to get well. These two events truly represent that passion and the spirit, enthusiasm, and support found in each and every recovery walk across the United States. For more information on National Recovery Month, to find out how to get involved, or to locate an event near you, visit the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov. It takes many hands to build a healthy life. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is possible with the support of my community. Join the voices for recovery. Visible. Vocal. Valuable. For confidential information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The stories of recovery are the stories of our family members, our friends, our coworkers, and the people we meet every day. As they succeed in living self-directed lives and achieving their full potential, we see the benefits of recovery, not only for individuals, but also for their family, friends, and community. By raising our voices for recovery, we help to increase public awareness and help to grow the recovery movement. Participation in Recovery Month events and work to support recovery throughout the year helps thousands of people from all walks of life on the path to hope, health, and wellness. As we recognize the success of the 2015 Recovery Month events, we also want to turn your attention toward next year. For information on how to get started, go to the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov. There, you will find examples of events others have organized. Remember, the type of Recovery Month event you choose can be whatever your imagination and your creativity inspire you to do. Who knows, maybe your event will be highlighted in our showcase for 2016. SAMHSA would like to thank you for all you do to support recovery. Let's keep this exciting work going. To download and watch this program or other programs in the Road to Recovery series, visit the website at recoverymonth.gov.